Hey, what's going on? It's Greg O'Gallagher with the Road to Rip podcast. Um, and we got some interesting topics today. We're going to be talking about all about um, the paleo diet and our thoughts on the paleo diet and the truth about the paleo diet. Like, should you go paleo? What are the benefits there? Um, and and what, what, what are the benefits that you're kind of missing out if you do go paleo? Um, and we're also going to be talking about this new uh, massive sensation, which is uh, the bullet bulletproof coffee. You know, shoving in some morning some uh, coconut oil and some uh, some MCT oil and some butter into your coffee, and we're gonna get into that and and uh, what's going on there. So it's gonna be interesting for sure. Uh, but without further ado, Christopher Walker has a uh, a paleo joke for us. Yeah. Okay. So this is part just a, as a precursor. Uh, Greg and I have decided that uh, we would love... We're, we're experimenting with a new format here. So uh, we're going to start each episode from now on with a joke. And we'd love to actually have you guys submit jokes to us. And we can read uh, the funniest joke at the beginning of every episode. But since we're starting it today, uh, we found a joke. So we're going to say this joke. And it's actually by Conan O'Brien. So uh, just slightly modified by us. So here we go. A new study shows that going on the paleo diet can turn you into a crabby person with serious mood swings. On the other hand, the study says that always happens when you take donuts away from a fat person. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thanks, Conan. That's the joke of the day. And uh, if you have a joke of the day, shoot Greg or I an email and uh, submit your jokes, and we'll read it on, on the air and uh, say who it's by. So, all right, oh, let's... Uh, and, and, and you know, no, just a, a, a fun fact, by the way, donuts were created by Canadians. Just the FYI, just the plug, you know, to the Canadians listening. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wait. Uh, I mean, it's, it's one of the few. It's one of the few things we have invented. So I mean, <laughs> so we pretty well, much. Well, what's the what's the deal with that that cronut? Isn't the cronut the new thing? Like the uh, croissant I donut? I haven't heard did of the that. Canadians? Did the Canadians invent that, or someone like? Coming in on your territory right now, man. I don't know. I gotta look into this. The cronut. The yeah. Cronut. It's a good name. If it, anyone knows more about the cronut, shoot us an email. <laughs> and uh, I'm <laughs> gonna love be, to hear. I'm gonna be starting the uh, paleo cronut. Uh, you can go buy those right now at paleocronut.com. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you get all your paleo cronuts. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, the cronut's a good name. It sounds like you know, Cro Magnon. And I guess cro yeah, were I guess yeah, they were yeah. on the paleo diet technically. I mean, so if we could act like <laughs> Corona, uh, a paleo Corona is is it just like you know a pound of beef shaped in a donut, or what? Yeah, it, I I don't I'm, know. I'm asking you. I'm asking uh, you as the inventor of the paleo Corona. So, I'm just curious. I'm, I'm I'm gonna say the paleo Corona is uh, made with um, mashed up cauliflower. Combined with um, some risotto sauce, a little bit of um, um, buffalo, wild buffalo beef. It's it's you know it's, it gets very technical. Um, the risotto actually accents the wild buffalo beef in such a way. Really, it oh. really tastes nice on the palate. Um, That's like a, is it a secret recipe? I don't want to get into it too much right now. Yeah. You know, I can't you know okay. can't give away the full thing. You know, you gotta tame the beast before you let it out of its cage, as they say. Yeah. Um, so. So everyone, look out for the launch of the Paleo Cronut later this winter <laughs> over at paleocronut.com. All right, now let's get into let's get like into the flow of the actual nutrition talk. Um, and you know, for those that don't know what the Paleo diet is, um, Chris, do you want to give them a little rundown? Uh, so rundown, it's it's actually kind of difficult to. Uh, Give it a definition, and that's something we're going to discuss because it's it's so uh, widely disputed, even within its own uh, culture, right? So right. Well, I uh, I guess the way that most people know of it, and um, which might not truly be accurate, but the way it's depicted um, to a lot of people that practice the paleo diet have heard of it. Is basically it's it's uh, the concept is around eating foods um, that humans have been eating for over ten thousand years. The belief is that the foods that we evolved on, these are the foods that are the best for us. And um, in the agricultural revolution and all the foods that, that came around, including dairy and grains 
Um, this is what has caused like the the modern day illness and the problems with our health and our weight. And so to get back to health and to feel fantastic, you got to start eating um, the foods that we evolved on for hundreds of thousands of years, and that namely consists of uh, meats, vegetables, nuts, berries or fruits, um, potentially tubers, and cronuts. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, did, I, did I miss that. any? Did I miss anything there? No, I, that's actually that's a good definition, and and then that's really where um, you know a good starting off point because from there that's where I think a lot of the uh, debate starts to happen in terms of what you know because none of us were actually around back when you know uh, whatever when you know this whole you know those foods like how are, how are any of us really gonna you know know exactly or why should we care? And, you know, that's another big question. Is like, hey. uh, no, go ahead. I was, I was going to say, and more specifically, I mean, do we know the amounts they ate? Because it could be drastically different um, if uh, humans ate pretty much an 80% diet of just animal flesh. Whereas you could do a paleo diet where you're eating mostly fruits and nuts and a tiny bit of protein, which would be drastically different even though you're consuming relatively the same foods. So, I mean, the macronutrient composition um, that humans had hundreds of thousands of years ago, I mean, we don't even know what that is. I mean, we can look at some, we can look at some uh, tribes and whatnot and get an idea of what their diet is, but that's still very much different than um, what, you know, tribes would have been eating hundreds of thousands of years ago. So, like, the point I want to stress there is that there are so many different ways you could technically be paleo. You could be paleo, you could literally, like, um, you could literally just do, like, a chicken breast and broccoli diet, like a bodybuilding chicken chicken breast and broccoli diet, that is technically <laughs> paleo. Um, or you could be doing a diet that's like high in 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 fish or high in mostly nuts. Or you could do a diet that's like, I mean, I've heard of, of these fruit, uh, fruit, fruitarians that eat pretty much just fruit. I mean, that's still technically paleo, um, but it's just a little bit more limited. So, anyways, it's like it's very subjective. Um, there. Yeah, and that, that's where I think just in general I think people just miss the point uh, because the point is to, you know, nurture your body back to health off of, you know, the standard American diet, uh, the, the grain, heavy grain recommendations and uh, having, you know, damaging your body with excess sugar and inflammation. And that's the point, to use, you know, your diet as a way to heal your body and bring about, you know, an endocrine balance and, and be healthy. But I think then, then it just, like most things, it deteriorates into, like, some bickering, or quite a bit of bickering, especially in, in the paleosphere, but about, like, what's real, what's not, you know, all the fleshing out of the research, um, a bunch of new research being taken up. Uh, you know, it's it's just an interesting thing. And, and uh, a good thing, you know, something we were talking about earlier uh, as a topic to start with in this in this uh, discussion is how how much uh, fat because okay so so one of the big things is like um, carbs right in, in one of the big battles that that rages within the, the paleosphere is is uh, how how many carbs should I eat on a daily basis and most people especially people that you know both of us are doing coaching with right now and uh, some people just come and they are under this this uh, idea that they shouldn't be eating carbs. And then when when you introduce carbs into the into the training picture, especially with the right training program, uh, they start losing fat far quicker than they were before. So that's uh, it's interesting. I guess I don't know where I'm trying to go with this. Well, except actually, for like where where do you where do you like delineate between uh, your goal? You, uh, is your goal to like look good, or is your goal to just eat, uh, you know, a diet that is going to get rid of uh, stomach bacteria, or to um, make you lose excess weight down to maybe like a 15% body fat for males, or like maybe a 22, 23% body fat for women? You know, just kind of a normal looking body. Is that what? You, yeah, that and that comes back down to the why again. You know what we've been talking about the last couple episodes and weeks. Um, defining your why. Right. I was going to say that you know, um, there are a lot of studies 
showing um, the lower carb diet to be more effective than the diet higher in carbs. But fundamentally, fundamentally, the reason um, that is is because the low carb diet is higher in protein, that and the, the lower fat diet has um, has uh, or the higher carb diet, I should say, has less protein. And protein is like the common denominator there because protein has the highest um, impact on maintaining lean body mass. It helps keep you full. There's no other um, macronutrient as filling as dietary protein. So when you do have an even amount of protein, even amount of calories, then the amount of carbs doesn't really matter. Um, if you're eating 2,000 calories per day and you're getting in 160 grams of protein, then you could be taking in zero carbs. You'd be taking in 150 grams of carbs. You're still in that same deficit, and the, the 150 gram uh, of carbs will actually help support training, support sleep, recovery. Um, so there's no advantage uh, for going like practically zero in carbs. The deficit is a deficit. You just got to find the carb fat ratio that you function best on. And for most people, zero carbs is not a fun time and you'll probably have an easier time trading off a bit of that excess fat for a little bit more carbs. So um, that's where I stand there. Now getting into um, you know why like let's talk about the paleo diet and why it tends to work very well for a lot of people in, in terms of from a uh, like in terms of like if someone sticks to the paleo diet usually they'll get great results. Now now why is uh, that? In, in in what in what terms? Like so what's like a what uh what are you like, what are you defining as as a result? So I I guess uh fat loss. Uh, okay. Just fat loss to a certain point though. I never I to, never to have a, seen really to a, to really a certain, like well, well, I guess physique what I've, level physique level fat loss, where it's uh, uh, you don't ra you rarely see that actually. I, actually, you know what's funny is that 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 one fitness mo model competitor, uh, I think it's a British guy. What's his name? Blonde hair. Um, ah, God, this this one fitness model. It's the name's gonna come to me. But he on his most recent um, competition, he went 100 percent paleo, and uh, he got pretty much the same condition as he used to get into. Um, well, I, honestly, that that's probably just a like a use case where it's the the guy is very advanced at what he does and he knows exactly how to train at a super high level funny, and manipulate his the, body at a high the level. Funny, the funny thing is, is that he got caught juicing. <laughs> really? Well, yeah. So I guess the paleo diet wasn't good enough because <laughs> he he got he got caught taking steroids this time. I guess the what? carb. The, I guess he needed the steroids to help with the lack of carbs in his diet, but um. I guess what I was saying before is like, um, I guess what I was saying before with the diet, uh, with like why the paleo diet works, it works well for people that literally have dysregulated eating habits. They're not that health conscious. They just tend to eat a bunch of crap. They've let themselves go, and now they want to lose weight. So of course they're going to get results when they switch to the paleo diet. The reason the paleo, paleo diet causes fat loss is, um, is also because you know calories do matter, and when you take out a ton of food. When you take out all these, um, all this stuff that people were eating before, and instead you get them to eat more lean protein, more vegetables, um, more fruits, they're gonna get way more full, and so they're naturally gonna lose. Um, they're naturally gonna eat less calories than their body requires, and so they'll automatically lose fat. Although, as Chris was alluding to earlier, this tends to be seen up to a certain point. You know, maybe that 15% body fat range. Maybe they'll get down to 12%, and then they'll get stuck. Um, and that's pretty much because you, at that point, it's like your body's happy where it, it's at. It doesn't yeah, want to get exactly. any leaner, so your appetite gears up, and you start eating. Even though you're just eating paleo foods, you're going to be eating more to your body's demands. Whereas before, you had all this excess weight, so once you stopped eating all this junk that was causing you to overeat and causing you to get more hunger, more cravings, once you cut all that out and you just pretty much ate, you know, um, paleo foods, your body just was happy to be in that deficit and burn off all this excess fat. Um, and then when you hit that one point, that 15%, 12%, then you really got to be diligent. You got to start tracking your calories, uh, tracking your macros even, to push yourself to that next level, as well as start doing some carb refeeds to help you know coax your body fat to a lower set point through elevating leptin, the hormone which pretty much uh, controls your body weight and your body fat stores. Yeah, and I, the other element to it, and uh, I really want to bring this up, is because I think... I think paleo style eating is actually 
uh, it's very good for the body in general, you know, to, and it's good at regulating or, or nourishing your endocrine system back into health off of all the excess sugar and the flour and grains and whatnot. So I think that's exactly why you see those results quickly on people who uh, were overweight and eating like, you know, pounding sugar, for example, and then switching to a, a more of a meat-based diet with, you know, vegetables and whatnot. You know, it makes perfect sense that uh, you would see the results, not even with just with calories. Even if you probably ate the same amount of calories, you'd probably still see some positive results. But you would uh, also see results, you know, from like better sleep, uh, improved libido, and you know, that sort of stuff, maybe less body odor, just random, you know, like more uh, secondary characteristics. But then I think that's also why you see people uh, halt their fat loss, like you said, where your body kind of just wants to be where it is. And it kind of, it finds that, that endocrine balance and it strikes it. And for most guys, it's somewhere between 12 and 15% body fat. And for women, it's, it's a little higher. Uh, but that's where your body's happy, just staying. And that makes sense, but to uh, when you want to get lower into a condition where you know you have like visible uh, abdominal definition and uh, possibly like striation and muscles and whatnot, and that's when like like you're just saying, Greg, you have to start uh, manipulating your carb intake, and that's really what what uh, happens. And you have to eat enough carbs to really support the correct style of training to get your body into that that uh, state, so you can actually look great. Or you can just go zero carb and take roids like that one fitness model. Yeah, you could do that too, I guess. Yeah, it's gonna come to me his name, but um, yeah. Is, is he like a YouTuber or what? what is he's he? a he's a YouTuber too. Um, and well, they don't even know if he took steroids or what he was taking, but he he definitely he he got caught he got caught doing something. Um. Okay, it's like we yeah. caught you doing something. We don't know what you're doing. I mean, I I've been yeah I've been looking I've been telling people to tell me. Um, about this, but but anyways, oh, you know what? Like, like through the grapevine or something? Through the grapevine, but apparently a lot of these guys they take illegal stuff and they just try and not get caught by cutting it out at a certain certain point. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, like a lot, yeah, a lot of athletes. Athletics, <laughs> yeah, elite. <laughs> it's very common elite athletics. Um, and I guess uh, I guess one thing I wanted to bring up with the with the paleo diet is that um. Like certain foods that you're not allowed to have, like is there any validity there? For example, dairy. My stance with dairy is if you can tolerate it, if you can tolerate it fine, then there's no reason to cut it out. I mean, if you look at the studies, people that do consume dairy, especially dairy protein, uh, tend to be leaner and have more muscle mass than um, those that that don't that don't have dairy. Dairy is very high in leucine, which is an amino acid. That has an integral role in protein synth uh, synthesis. It's very high in, in leucine. I mean, it's hard to get. Like, you get way more leucine content from from dairy protein than than from meat or whatnot. Um, another advantage is of dairy protein just it, it absorbs very slowly. So I mean, if you're having some dairy protein, you'll have amino acids in your system for several hours. I mean, there are all kinds of. I mean, that's with like the casein protein. If you're having cottage cheese or cheeses, yeah. that doesn't count if you're having whey because whey is very fast. But I mean, you know, studies have shown like uh, dairy is great for glucose control. It improves uh, blood lipids and blood pressure, reduces inflammation, improves immune function, helps with appetite. Like dairy has dairy protein has a strong impact on uh, your satiety hormones. So I mean, dairy is is maybe like we haven't had it for hundred thousand years, but it's been a, a food that came along and actually has a lot of benefits assuming that you can tolerate it fine. So I don't see any reason why you need to cut out dairy. Yeah, like if, if you can tolerate if you're not lactose intolerant uh, and and or even if you are you know somewhat sensitive to it, if you just eat it in the right quantities. I think I think quantities never you never like get any play in terms of when people recommend things or don't recommend it or recommend against, they never talk about quantity. You know, some people hear you say, like, you go ahead and eat dairy, and then they'll eat an entire block of cheese. And it's just like, and, you know, they have a stomach ache. Of course I, you're going to have a stomach ache if you eat a whole block of cheese. Like, just use some common and, sense. And, yeah, and that's just complete ignorance. Like, people have to label everything as good or bad. Alcohol's bad. It's like, you know what? No, it's like if you drink alcohol excessively, sure, it's bad. But in moderation, alcohol actually has been shown um, to improve your immune functioning. Uh, has it, it actually reduces the risk of a lot of uh, 
illnesses and diseases in moderation. And I don't, I don't mean that per se. I mean that people that do drink alcohol moderately tend to live longer um, and weigh less, funny enough. Um, and, you know, in some studies, moderate consumption of alcohol actually uh, improves testosterone. But, I mean, yeah, you can't really label anything as good or bad. It's all a matter of context and the dosage. And yeah, the dose, the quantity of it, and and that's really where like the the moderation strikes in, and that's a, a good way to take you know something like paleo as well to use moderation, and know why you're doing things. If you're doing it to, uh, you know, say there's there are studies that uh, say ketogenic diet will improve uh, seizure. Uh, seizure relapses in, you know, like ep epileptic. So if, if you're in that scenario, of course, you know, you probably want to be trying something like that. But but uh, if you're looking to get in, like, super good shape and have a six-pack and be very strong and, and whatnot, don't – I would just recommend, like, admitting that and being honest with, with yourself about that and then knowing that uh, paleo itself, just, like, pure paleo, never eating carbs and – uh, you know, potentially like rice, grain, that sort of thing, it is not the best way to do that. You know, it'll get you to a certain point, but then you need to start to uh, experiment with uh, carbohydrate manipulation. And white rice and that sort of thing is actually a great source of starch to use to fuel your training and, and muscle growth and, you know, glycogen uh, stores and whatnot. So uh, that, that's where it gets a little more advanced. But just, just know that, you know, you're going to get very likely a much better physique in general if you're actually eating carbs and uh, knowing what you're doing and you're going to sleep better. It's it's just, it's you know, it is what it is. So just know why you're doing right. certain things. Yeah, I just want to like stress one point, just that like I kind of view the paleo diet as sort of a lazy approach to getting in great, to kind of like to getting fit or to, to losing weight and getting your diet under control um, just because as long as you're eating enough lean protein, veggies, covering your nutritional basis, then there's nothing, like, there's no reason why you can't have non-paleo foods. I mean, um, like, I think dairy is, is healthy. If you can tolerate it, then go for it. But, like, non-paleo foods like, um, like rice, uh, gluten-free pasta, um, chocolate, alcohol is for sure non-paleo, but paleo people drink it, so... It's it's very yeah. hypocritical. Um, but whatever, whatever you like, whatever you're really into, um, I there's really no reason why you can't include that into your diet as long as you take account over your total energy intake and your protein. Then I mean, have it. So I mean, going paleo, the the concept is like the concept there in terms of a fat loss strategy or in terms of staying in great condition is that you know what? If as long as I stick to those foods, my appetite will tell me. Um, will tell me when to stop eating and that works to a certain point but if you want to get great results and enjoy like the food that we have today then you know what track your macros track your calories maybe get 80 percent of your diet based on you know wholesome healthy natural foods paleo foods or dairy or you know um, gluten-free carbs like potatoes or sweet potatoes or rice or brown rice pasta or quinoa or I mean or beans if you like beans um, I mean, beans are non-paleo foods, but um, a lot of a lot of uh, countries that have that consume a lot of beans, they actually have healthier or, or are healthier. Um, but then maybe you don't absorb beans very well at all. I guess that's very much individual. Yeah, and that comes down to quantity as well. Yeah. Wait, did, exactly. you, did you hear that whistle? Yeah, I did. No, no idea what that was. All right. Uh, anyway. Yeah, it, and even you'll see it even when if with like the godfather of the paleo, you know, primal movement, uh, Mark Sisson. It, he, for years, has been promoting the uh, idea of you know the eighty twenty principle with with the whole thing, but and he is you know unanimously the most respected you know thought leader in that that group. So uh, it's interesting how people still will take you know even though he says that. You know, to have the 80-20 principle, and, and it sounds, you know, from what I've read, he practices in terms of like, you know, his 20% is like some chocolate and, or some wine and stuff. You know, pretty benign things. But I still think it's interesting how a lot of people are gonna still take it and run to the extreme 
be like, mm-hmm. oh, 80 20 doesn't sound good enough. I'm going to do 99 1. Yeah. Or like, and, and, and I, <laughs> I just want to get into like a few like circumstances that may arise if you are on the 100% paleo diet. Let's say, for example, right. let's say, for example, your, your girl comes home and she brings over some whipped cream or something. You gotta be like, no, sorry, paleo <laughs> diet. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I mean, I'm too paleo. I mean, you gotta you gotta live a little. You don't wanna be too stringent, too strict. You don't wanna yeah. be that food Nazi. Well, so. and I think too. Also, like uh, even uh, things like on on your birthday or something. Uh, I think food actually has a place in terms of being fun. Sometimes you know it's fun to do things like. I had a great time every every year on my birthday. It's free Slurpee Day uh, at Seven Eleven, so so they give you free Slurpees on Seven Eleven. That's my birthday, the best day of the year. Mm-hmm. So like I, you know, nutritionally, it's it's just a Slurpee. Like it's a you know, it's a couple ounces, like eight ounces. Who cares? Uh, but it's it's more of a nostalgic thing that I've been doing for years, and it's fun, and it's you know, kind of you feel like a kid getting a Slurpee. It's like okay, it's, but you know, it's probably nutritionally the worst thing you could be putting in your body, just like straight up corn syrup. Um, but because I practice like moderation uh, for the rest of my diet, you know, it's, it doesn't harm me at all. It doesn't do anything bad. Um, same with like birthday cake, for example. I for years I, I was actually very strict with my diet, and and that's you know part of the reason I, I healed really well endocrine wise was uh, because I took paleo seriously for a little while, and then I I did introduce the moderation, and that helped a lot too, just with my psychology. Uh, but you know, I remember for years I I wouldn't eat birthday cake. I would get, you know, I would have people would like buy me a cake on my birthday, and I was just like, I'm not going to eat that because it's bad for me. And, and then I think that potentially is taking a little too far, at least in my mind. Some people might disagree with that, but uh, just having like fun occasions where you can uh, be with friends and enjoy food and have, you know, have a good time. I I think it's taking it potentially too far if you if you're getting out of those situations and just on the basis of of uh, you know, it's not paleo or something like that, which is kind of a loose argument anyway, so. Right, and and I mean, like, if you do are going to, like, if you want to have a dessert and enjoy yourself, I mean, have a real dessert. Don't have, like, some paleo recipe with, like, coconut milk and almond flour and and all that stuff just because it's, like, it's like pretty much you're getting the dessert pretty much in a pure fat format. So it's like one little piece of dessert is going to be packing like 500 calories, whereas you could have like a massive, a much larger amount um, of like, say, a gluten-free pancake mix or a gluten-free um, cake mix or whatever, gluten-free cookie mix. And you'd be getting the carbs that you actually want. Like you probably, your brain wants that serotonin release, wants to feel good, it wants some carbs, and you'll be getting, uh, you'll be getting the dessert in a much uh, more volumic load. So I say, like, eat paleo. If you want a dessert, don't try and make the paleo into dessert. It just it's crazy. It's just weird. I mean, have you, Chris? Have you had any? Have you had any paleo desserts? I've had some paleo desserts, actually, pretty tasty. But at the same time, it's really interesting you bring that up because they taste great, especially when they're fat heavy. They taste awesome, and or like heavy in like dark chocolate and stuff. Uh, you know, of course, it's gonna taste great. But at the same time, I, it's a different psychologically because I know I'm like this is like healthy for me, <laughs> so so I'm gonna eat twice as much, and you know you end up sitting and consuming potentially twice as many calories, or sometimes even three times as many calories as if I would just had like a bowl of ice cream or like a piece of cake. You know, yeah, I I remember I I made like these cookies one time. I made these cookies when I was doing paleo a few years ago, and um they were like the cookies were pretty much made up with like mashed bananas um almond butter shredded coconut flakes and like some dates or something these are all like super high calorie yeah. foods in a very small amount and i made this whole massive tray and i just kept eating them like i must have taken in 2000 calories of like paleo cookies had i just made like some normal like even just gluten free gluten-free cookies, um, I could have eaten, like, taken in a quarter of the calories and felt way better, but, like, it's, like, it's just not, it's not even natural to have, like, uh, it's not, like, it's, it's never, like, if you actually lived 100,000 years ago, would you ever come about, like, just mounds of freaking mashed bananas and almond butter and shredded coconut and, and, like, coconut milk 
just mounted together. It's just it, like so. It, in itself, yes, they are technically paleo foods, but it comes in a it comes in a in a uh, a quantity you never experience. I mean, same thing with like, even just buttloads of almonds. If you're having buttloads of almonds, back <laughs> in the day, you'd have to actually you know crack open these almonds, and it would be a process to get a small handful. But no, oh, yeah. with the paleo diet, you can just freaking eat bags full of these almonds. You think you're eating paleo, but it's just like it's like no, that's like very different than what you'd actually experience in uh, in nature. And well, I think it, that brings us that brings oh. us to like a, a huge point because I think the biggest problem with the that whole uh, industry because it is an industry. It's uh, it's the idea that calories don't matter. That's like a huge pervasive thing in in paleo is they don't. Calories don't matter, and that's where people are to get really frustrated about about the fact that they can't lose 30 pounds in 30 days, or you know, one of the marketing stories when uh, they're eating 100% paleo all the time. They're eating a perfect diet in their eyes, but because of what they've been told that calories don't matter. But when they actually sit and monitor what they're eating, they're probably eating you know three, four thousand calories, and most of it's mm-hmm. coming from saturated fats and which aren't inherently bad, but in an excess, you know, it can be bad. And that's something I, we're actually going to talk about in terms of uh, Bulletproof and, and some of the studies that are coming out and the commentary on, on that whole thing. It's like an excess of anything is not good for you. To- totally. And, I mean, they've shown, like, a lot of athletes that were eating, like, high saturated fat diets, which is burning off the calories, not gaining any weight. Uh, they actually had great, great health markers, but... When you're a couch potato that's sitting down, that's not active, that's that's um, taking in a lot of saturated fat, then and like eating it at a calorie excess, then it becomes uh, problematic. Um, yeah, it's not even couch potatoes. Though. It's it's most people like uh, even people who are crossfitting or doing uh, gym classes. You know, so one one of the things that's common with them usually is they're they're overtrained for their condition. They're not athletes. They're just overtraining by doing uh, six days a week. And it's not just CrossFit. It's like, you know, anything that's like a high intensity, something that, that you do, I think they all have a good place in like a well-balanced program, activity program for people, but uh, at far more moderate amounts. And that's that's where people, uh, I mean, I guess we're seeing a trend here. It's all coming down to the fact that people like aren't moderate ever. You, everyone's just extreme and they're just going to blow it all like to one end of the spectrum or the other, uh, whether it's exercise or diet or Anything. Oh, and I just remembered. So that one, uh, that fitness model I was talking about, that on his latest uh, contest, he was doing the paleo diet to get into shape, and he actually um, got caught taking some sort of drug. The speculation that it has been a steroid. Uh, this particular individual, he looks fantastic, by the way. Um, but did he get caught with like a needle in his butt or something? I how, think how they... I, well, after the competition, when they did all the blood work and testing, he tested positive, or, or, or not, maybe not blood work, maybe it was like a urine test. He tested positive for something, so um, he did fail the drug test. His name's Rob Riches. Rob, I have heard of that. Rob Riches, I, yeah, he, yeah, he's on YouTube. He's on YouTube. I know. He's but on. like, you know what? I feel like a lot of these guys, they're taking stuff. They have to, they have to take it to compete. They just can't get caught, and then he, for whatever reason, got caught. Um, so, I mean, even when yeah. people say they're natural, it doesn't actually mean that they're necessarily natural. Oh, or yeah. even, if they, even if they compete in drug-tested events, it doesn't necessarily mean um, that they're, they're, not, they're natural. So, that's quite interesting. Yeah, so let's uh, switch gears, I guess, and let's move into some of the commentary. Because this is kind of breaking, you know, breaking news. So, Bulletproof Coffee has been like a, a big, like Greg said in the beginning of the show, a big worldwide sensation, right, over the last six months to six to 12 months, possibly, you know, <laughs> yeah. starting to get super popular. Uh, one of my clients even emailed me. He's like, uh, hey, okay, I gave him, I set up his nutrition plan and his training program, and, and after he emailed me, he's like, he's like uh, can I still have my uh, Bulletproof coffee with this nutrition plan? I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Let's just take in an extra 600 calories of pure fat in the morning. I'm like, no, <laughs> this is not going <laughs> to, this is not going to conflate. You got to ditch the just a bulletproof. Well, well, see, here's the thing: is like I have a couple clients who uh, drink bulletproof coffee, and what I what I say, and and I think it's I think it's fine. I guess we'll see if if nothing happens. But what I, what I think is, as long as they fit it into the the macronutrient profile and are consuming it within, you know, for most 
almost all the clients we have it set up on a fasting uh, schedule where it's you're skipping breakfast. So as long as it's within your eating window and it fits within your macros, I'd say it's like perfectly fine. Drink as much as you want, like whatever. I don't say that, but um, just fit it in your macros and put it in your eating window. And when you're fasting, actually fast. You know, no calories. That's what fasting means. Don't <laughs> drink calories. <laughs> And I love how uh, I guess Dave Asprey's coined like bulletproof fasting. It's like it's like bulletproof fasting. It's like come on, Dave. It's not fasting. Rights, rights reserved. Rights reserved. <laughs> rights reserved. Sorry, it's not <laughs> fasting. Okay, if you're taking in 600 calories, I mean it would technically be more of a fast if you freaking consumed a McFlurry because <laughs> you'd burn through that faster. <laughs> um, well, yeah, it is. You could actually have technically calorie-wise, you could have. Two McFlurries for the amount of calories you'd get in one cup of bulletproof <laughs> coffee, according to the recipe. Uh, I would rather have two McFlurries, to be honest. But uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, anyway, I mean, we don't want to like completely bash bulletproof coffee because I know it actually like a lot of people like it. It's great, but we just want to put it into some context for you right. because there I, actually have been some really interesting stuff uh, coming out, and we'll we'll discuss both of these things. But Alan Aragon had a uh, uh, interesting commentary on it recently, last over the last couple of weeks, uh, in his research review, and there is also another. He interviewed in a this week's research review about. Uh, he interviewed two doctors who are actually in the Paleo Physicians Network who started to notice a trend over the last six months uh, with people who specifically were drinking bulletproof coffee, and we'll talk about that trend. Um, and if you're listening to this in the future. Uh, first off, email us because I want to know what the future is like. And then second, uh, you know, you're know you hearing this as it's breaking. So uh, hopefully we'll have some more updates on this in the coming weeks. And well, you probably know how this is all going down anyway, so you're in the future. Well, uh, well I just want to say real quick, I mean, if you're trying to get lean, get ripped, I mean, you got to hit your macros. you got to eat, eat a certain amount of calories. And it's just going to make it so much harder to... to, to throw 600 calories into a cup of coffee, and coffee in itself is great at boosting energy, great at, at blunting your appetite, and so let it do its job. If you throw in mounds of butter and mounds of MCT oil in there, it's just going it's, it's just gonna defeat the purpose because now it's, you don't get the hunger blunting effect just because it, it, you don't need it because you put in all this fat, and would it not be more enjoyable to save all those all that fat for with your meals so you can enjoy nice, um, fatty, fleshy meat? Or carbs with like butter and stuff like that, but that would be way more enjoyable, um, I think, as opposed to just throwing in all this fat in your in your coffee. Because these are not free calories. This is this is these are calories that your body um, is going to have to burn through. They're not free. So I mean, track your macros, track your calories, and then invariably you'll really find it um, off-putting to throw tons of fat into a coffee recipe. It would be much yeah, tastier, <laughs> much and more enjoyable to have it with your food. Oh yeah, totally. Like you know, sweet potatoes with butter. You know, I would much rather have that for you know my fat intake for the day than like a cup of coffee with butter. Uh, and that's really what it comes down to. You just nailed it on the head. And it comes down to like the choices that you're willing to make as an individual in your own diet in terms of your preference. Uh, I, I just caution anybody to like blindly follow. Uh, one fad after another, and this does seem like it's kind of like a fad. Uh, and calories do matter. Macros do matter if you're trying to manipulate, you know, the, your physique, uh, even at the, just at the principal level of like knowing, you know, where you are, even if you're not meticulously counting. They, it does matter. It all matters. And you know, just an anecdote. Anecdote. Like my dad, for example, went on Bulletproof. He found it uh, online and, and was really excited about it because you know. He's kind. Of, he's a tech geek. He's an engineer. He's like really into you know. And that's really how the the branding goes with with the bulletproof stuff. Um, he he was he t you know he told me about it and I was like oh cool you know because I just started hearing about it at that point. Like, Go for it. And uh, he, he comes back to me two weeks later. He goes. He, he's kind of like miffed. He's like kind of ticked off. He's like uh, I was like what's wrong? Oh you know that the bulletproof. I started doing that, and I gained five pounds over the last two weeks. I didn't change anything else. I just start, you know, just was drinking bulletproof coffee, and um, you know, just eating the, per the recommendations. That, you know, just eating like a similar amount of food, even less potentially, uh, because there's a lot of like beans and or I don't know, I don't even know what the what he was doing, 
but it, it was like far healthier foods than he was eating before in terms of like eating pastas and uh, also lasagnas and, and whatnot. <laughs> um, but he put on five pounds, so he got kind of pissed off. So that was just interesting, you know. Maybe maybe other people have seen different results, but well, in Spencer, calories do matter, right? In Spencer Nadolsky's, uh, I guess his research. Um, I guess he he works with a lot and of and he's clients. he's the doctor. For anyone who doesn't know, he's a do- one of the doctors with the uh, Paleo Physicians Network. Right, right, and yeah. so he found out that a lot of his uh, clients, uh, for, I mean, a bunch of his clients, that like their back cholesterol numbers were just going through the roof. And what uh, turned out was that uh, his clients started doing bulletproof coffee in the morning and having all this saturated fat, extra saturated fat intake in the morning. I mean, they're already getting enough in their diet as, as a uh, as a Paleo practitioner. So I mean, adding all that in the morning with their coffee, um, like 600 calories worth, totally messed up their their numbers. So, um, you, I mean, it's one thing to be careful of if you if you are gonna d- do some uh, fatty coffee. Um, definitely, I would be careful of it. I wouldn't necessarily uh, recommend it. I guess the one more other thing that we could address um, are are um, the actual bullet. What, what is the bulletproof coffee? It's like it's like supposed to have it's no uh, mi- myoto myo. My, mycotox- mycotoxins. mycotoxins, mycotoxins. Yeah. yeah. So the the recipe. Let's. Uh, I'll just. Uh, I'll read the recipe here. I got it right up on the computer. So we have 500 milliliters of black coffee brewed with mold-free upgraded coffee beans. So that's an interesting topic. We'll, we'll talk about. There's some commentary on that as well. Uh, add two tablespoons or more, up to 80 grams, about two-thirds of a standard stick of butter of Kerrygold or other unsalted grass-fed butter. Next step, add 30 grams of upgraded MCT oil for max energy, weight loss, and brain function. This is six times stronger than coconut oil, your next best best choice. Sounds like, you know, better get that MCT oil. Coconut oil is not near as strong. And blend with a preheated hand blender, shake really hard. So that's like 50, 60 grams of fat. Yeah, that's a a lot well, of a potentially lot of, no. It's potentially um, 110 grams of fat. Oh, wait, no, it, it, it can't be. He well, he uh, he recommended in the second step, and this is like verbatim off of the website. Right. Uh, up to 80 grams of butter, which butter is pure fat. Right. And 30 grams of MCT oil, which is also pure fat. So that's 110 grams of fat. But is 80 grams of butter? 80 grams of fat. Is it? I don't know. Oh, maybe not. Maybe yeah. Maybe it's. I don't know. Let's check it out. I I, I think that 80 grams of butter is um, is less than 80 grams of uh, of fat. It has to be. <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> I hope so. I hope, I hope like, so. I hope the recommendation is not 110 grams. Yeah. Of okay. Fat. 80 grams. 80 grams of butter is 65 grams of. Fat, which is still a ridiculous amount. And it's still it's a, okay. So the recommendation is 95 grams of fat. 95. And so it's funny is that a lot of fitness models and bodybuilders and whatnot they cut with like 50 to 70 grams of fat per day. So this is more than like so for these guys this is more than their daily intake of fat in one cup of coffee. Something massive is wrong there. Jesus. Yeah, it's, well, it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. And, and and I just want to allude, I mean, if you're into the paleo eating thing, it's like, mo- I mean, if you were, if tens and tens of thousands of years ago, like most of the fat that you would accumulate would be a byproduct of protein. It would come from fleshy animals or whatnot. You would never get like this just pure, dense, concentrated source of fat. Like that would be an anomaly. That wouldn't happen very often. So I mean, if you are into eating in a way that your ancestors hundreds or tens of thousands of years ago would have eaten, this is not it. This is most clearly not it. And so I mean, I find the paleo diet to be a bit much, unless we can actually speculate as towards the macronutrient compositions of diets um, tens and tens of thousands of years ago. I mean, because you could eat non uh, paleo foods and and match it and like get the same amount of protein, fat, and carbs, and that might be preferable to eating just paleo foods and then having completely different macros and getting way more fat and maybe way less carbs or or having just completely different numbers or less protein. Um, 
So, I mean, I think it really comes down to hitting your macros, maybe eating predominantly healthy, wholesome food, and then do whatever, whatever, the, whatever else you want. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I think it, just keeping it simple, the, the recommendation is just, like, eat real food 80% of the time and then leave a little wiggle room for some moderation for yourself so you don't go insane. And yeah. uh, figure out, figure, just self-experiment and figure out a way to, like, get, you know, lose fat if you're looking to lose fat or maintain your weight if you're looking to maintain your weight or change your body composition if you're looking to do that. It's all about just <laughs> keeping it simple, like very simple. Don't argue with people on forums either. That's kind of a waste of time. Your wife misses you. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, if you are going to abide by, like, the paleo diet, like, don't obsess about it and don't try and instill those values in other people. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, a lot of pa people that are paleo, they take their diet like a religion. They take it so seriously. And it's like they, 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 they think better upon themselves. It's like, it's like, dude, I don't care you on the paleo diet. Just get off your, your, get off your high horse, man. It, I, it does not matter. Yeah. It's just a diet. It's, it's nowhere yeah. to, to derive your value from as a human being. No, yeah, it's, it's a way to... Again, back to your why. Like, why are you doing this? Why do you want to get in great shape? Are you trying to get in great shape, or are you trying to do something else? Uh, it, it all just comes down to that. It, okay, so let's. Uh, there are a couple, two two things I want to talk about with with uh, bulletproof in, in terms of like what I've read in in this commentary, Alan Aragon's commentary, and the interview with these doctors. So first, let's uh, talk about mycotoxins. So I think the big marketing push in terms of uh, bulletproof coffee versus other coffee is is that it's uh, mycotoxin free right so mycotoxin you know, and I, I admittedly I'm just reading what I'm hearing I don't know a whole lot about all this stuff I'm just reading what a couple of these studies say uh, yeah, so t for people who don't know what a my what mycotoxins are they are metabolites that are produced by uh, fungi, fungi, whatever, however you pronounce that. I still don't know how to pronounce that even after. Fungi. Fungi. <laughs> uh, how many years have I been saying that in bio class and whatnot? Don't even know how to say it. Um, that contaminate the crops, so like the uh, coffee crop. Um, and they exert adverse health effects on animals and humans. That's what the uh, citation says. So the... Uh, Basically, you have to understand, like, with any, my, with any toxicity in general, again, we go back to the quantity involved. So toxicity will come, you know, you can, you can get toxicity from, like, any number of uh, minerals, vitamins and minerals, or any sort of, uh, you know, fungi residue uh, all over the place. This one's just getting a lot of play. If you eat it all in high enough quantities, you're going to experience some sort of toxicity. That's just what happens because your body has trouble processing and, and getting rid of the waste. So um, that's where it's, the discussion starts to get interesting in terms of the mycotoxicity. So um, I guess one, on one side the claim is that the mycotoxins in regular coffee, just normal coffee, are enough to, uh, to, to the point where you should be scared if you're a regular coffee drinker. You should be scared that you are going to get cancer or what else did they have? It's listed as a potential human carcinogen. And let's see what else. You're starting, to freak, another... you're starting to freak me out, Chris. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to freak you out. No, I'm just saying this is one side of the argument. This is the mm -hmm. side um, for trying to get away from the mycotoxicity. So that, that's one of the things. They had another uh, illness but I can't find it right now. I'm reading through this article. But uh, So that's one side. The other side is what uh, Alan Aragon is citing in, in this uh, study review. Uh, there was a study by two guys named Tuzlavanu and Fol Leskowicz. Uh, I guess these are researchers. And they found that a normal... 300 milligram or milliliter serving of coffee contains around 31 nanograms of this uh, mycotoxin, okra toxin. And that's, that's like the, that's like just over a cup serving. That's like one, uh, a cup and a third, I think. Yeah, that's ju it's just over a cup. So, uh, in terms of numbers, 
the virtually safe dose, what they define as the virtually safe dose of, of this okra toxin, this mycotoxin, is 1.5 nanogram per kilogram body weight per day for a human. So for an average sized human, uh, an adult around 80 kilograms, this is what they, they measure. 176 pounds. 176 pound adult. Uh, they would have to consume approximately four servings of coffee or 14 shots of espresso per day to experience any sort of negative side effects of the mycotoxicity. So that's that's a really interesting thing, and that's based off of their uh, virtual safe dose recommendation. Um, so just you know, I just want to point that out, and that's that's uh, the two sides of the argument. So again, it comes back down to quantity. How much are you drinking? Are you drinking 14 shots of espresso per day? And if you are, you probably have other things to worry about, <laughs> along with. <laughs> some possible mycotoxicity because you probably can't yeah. sleep and you probably have some adrenal issues or uh, at least some massive jitters. But uh, I don't know. It's, it's just inter interesting to observe this this uh, potential feud that's starting because some people are pointing out, uh, you know, discrepancies in terms of, of uh, the, the marketing side versus what some studies are actually saying. And we know, you know, studies can be skewed as well, so it's just interesting to observe this and point it out to people. You know, we're not trying to take sides, but we're trying to just show what is happening and encourage people to pay attention and, and to question as opposed to, like, being a lemming. You know, you don't want to be a lemming. Just question things and look at them in the, con in the context in, within which they exist. And if you still enjoy drinking, you know, it tastes good, right? It, bulletproof coffee or fatty coffee tastes good, right? So, because coffee tastes good, fat tastes good. I, I'm not a drinker of it myself, but it is tasty. I've tried it. If you like drinking it and you can fit it in your macros, fit it in your macros and your calories. Mm -hmm. But if not, don't think of it as free calories. And don't think, also, don't be afraid, like, you know, like, Greg, don't be afraid of the carcinogens, or the, the potential my, mycotoxicity, because it looks like at least some some researchers are pointing out that you would have to drink 14 shots of espresso per day to actually, you know, and probably over a period of time, because if you weren't sustaining that, your body would be able to metabolize the waste, right? So maybe 14 shots of espresso per day over the course of several weeks before you would um, experience any serious mycotoxicity. So it's interesting to that we wanted to point out. Um, let's look at the other, the interview with these two um, paleo physicians. Uh, first off, I want to, one thing that kind of disappointed me about this this thing, and I'm, I'm impartial in this whole battle, but the, uh, it, it kind of disappointed me because these two guys, uh, and maybe, you know, maybe we can have them on the show, and I'd love to hear more about their, uh, their, their, clients, you know, coming in and having these issues because they, they all had, like, significantly raised cholesterol numbers uh, since since drinking the Bulletproof Coffee. But the thing that disappointed me was that at the end, they had a plug for their own coffee product called Lean Latte. And w wasn't that, that, a, itself, wasn't that a joke, though? I think they were joking. Is that a joke? I don't I know. I thought it was a joke. I'm like, oh, that's funny. I mean, it could be a joke, but it actually is on their store. I followed the link and I went to the link and it they're selling it for $33 on their store on leanerlivingstore.com and this is like a legit thing. It's got their they're in the headline on the header images. Okay. Um, I mean, maybe it's like good taste and stuff, but but that just really compromised the entire interview and the entire thing even if their uh, their clients are actually experiencing these issues. So I instantly I almost like could there was a tinge of me that I couldn't take any of this seriously. I had to almost like just disown this entire interview because it, even though it was a really interesting interview, very detailed, they they provided some very detailed numbers. Um, it, I just kind of discounted the entire thing after I saw that Lee right. Mate thing, and I'm like, I'm looking at this. This looks like something like Jillian Michaels would put her face on, and um, I looked at the ingredients list, and there were you know contained soy. Uh, contains a non-dairy creamer substance made out of sunflower oil, corn syrup solids, 
and mono and diglycerides. You know, it's, it's not like the healthiest thing you could be drinking, right? So that in and of itself kind of, you know, as a disclaimer, uh, that's the truth. That's I kind of, you know, put up a red flag for me in terms of this article. I was a little bit disappointed on that. But in terms of what they did find, uh, it is interesting. And, Greg, you, you want to elaborate on that? You were talking about it a little earlier. About what? About the fact that they uh, they were having, like, this significant trend, you know, yeah. with, the, with their uh, clients. And it, it's only been happening recently. It only started happening just months ago. I, I mean, I mean, like, I guess that's to be expected. If you're actually having, throwing in an extra, like, 90 grams, 60 to 90 grams of fat to your diet, things are going to go wrong. That's just, that's just, I mean, if you added 15, 20, okay, it's probably not a big deal, but, like, literally six, seven hundred calories extra from, from fat. I mean, there's, I mean, there's, there's no, of course things are going to get out of whack, so I'm not at all surprised by this guy's findings. And yeah, like, and that was the, that was, like, the, the takeaway they had from the interview, which actually is not compromising whatsoever, but the takeaway was just, we, we believe, as physicians, we believe that the reason the cholesterol levels are raised is because of the excess saturated fat. And saturated fat in of itself is not bad, but the excess of it is what is leading to these raised cholesterol levels. So that was the point that they made. So that, you know, that was interesting. And that goes back to what we've been saying this entire episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean... <clears throat> If you want to do like your fatty coffee in the morning, maybe do a tablespoon of fat, um, or none yeah. at all. But like, or none at all, and drink it within your your eating window if you're fasting. Right. If you're fasting, fast. That's that's the recommendation. So yeah. Fast. Give your body a break. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, I mean, nowadays it's just like it seems weird to eat in the morning. It just seems totally unbecoming. It's like, why would I eat in the morning? It doesn't make any sense. Like I look at. Food yeah, in the morning. Same. I'm just like, mm, no, no. Yeah. Got to build up my appetite. I got to earn it. You got to burn it to earn it. Yeah. Well, don't don't you sleep in quite a bit? So, so how how much in the morning are you actually awake? <laughs> well, I I actually I actually like try and wake up um, first thing in the afternoon, bright and early in the afternoon. <laughs> every morning, every day without fail, I get up bright and early in the afternoon. <laughs> uh. Uh, <laughs> so, no. so naturally, Greg would be repelled by the thought of food in the morning because he's not even awake. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much asleep. But I guess the, I mean I, st I, I wake up at um, about twelve, and I uh, I don't eat dinner until like at least six. You know, or a dinner. I say my first meal, my breakfast technically. My <laughs> I don't eat till six. But anyways. Yeah, um, I mean we've been on plenty of calls that go to like you know we're talking to like. Two in the morning, and then you're like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna go eat my dinner." Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Two just in the morning? What are you? Honestly, yeah, you, know, you have a slightly uh, just—it's just a pushed cycle, you know. Your your uh, sleep-wake cycle. Well, like, you, you know what? It's just like right now, um, this point of my life, this summer, I've been mostly um, working on my business, um, working on my fitness, and going out a lot. And so when you go out a lot, you don't get home till three or whatnot. So you tend to your sleep schedule tends to just totally gravitate towards waking up at twelve. And it's hard to like I mean it's hard to get back into the groove and force yourself to get up early so you can fall asleep earlier that night. So I mean I just I love uh, waking up at twelve. I'm gonna try and push it down to like it was like I was No, there's up. there's no reason no reason to be ashamed about it. Uh, I was, it's actually I was, it's actually quite good for to do for doing work though because you can get a lot of work done at night. Like I I work yeah. far better at night when everything's quiet and dark and you know you're you're just like in front of the computer and you can get a ton of work done. There's no distractions. People aren't like calling you asking if you want to grab lunch. They're not calling to see if you want to get coffee or dinner or whatever. You can just work. So it's actually you know for your lifestyle it's good. It works. Yeah, it, it works. Out. I actually like doing most of my work in the morning and the day, and then I'll just like do extra stuff at night. Just you know. But like that's just purely just because I want to. Um, but it's actually like I, I hang out with my friends a lot. I'm just like, oh guys, oh I gotta set my alarm clock tomorrow. I got a big day. They're like well, what time? I'm like I'm like eleven. Like eleven? <laughs> Get out of town. <laughs> what are you talking about? Eleven. <laughs> the life of a blogger. Being life, a blogger rocks. The life of a fitness blogger. Yeah. Um, and 
the fitness blogging shall it shall continue to grow as Christopher Walker and I we conflate and we bring our business to uh, the land of the, the La La Land, as they say. Yeah. La La the being Hollywood. L.A. Hollywood. So. Yeah. So that's um, that, a little update on that, I guess, for everybody. Um, we're yeah, we're planning to move out to L.A. at some time. We're going to be out there this fall uh, for a longish visit, and then go, you know, back to our respective homes for Christmas and. Thanksgiving in the U.S. and that sort of time period, and then uh, be out there after that, and we're, we're moving out there. So, anyone out there? A couple people have reached out to us. Actually, we're in L.A., so uh, we'd love to meet anybody who listens to the show, who, um, wants to grab coffee or whatever while we're out there and just connect. Uh, you know, it'd be great. And we're we're actually really ambitiously, you know, we're trying to. We think we got a good thing going here, and everyone seems to like it, and. Um, we're making a big difference in a lot of people's lives, and that's just super encouraging just as content creators, because especially because we started this podcast like for fun. We're just like, hey, you want to start a podcast? I was like, sure, how do you even do that? Uh, I don't know. I'll just watch some YouTube videos and figure it out. But now it's actually turning into quite the positive influencing show. You know, it's really encouraging. It's fun, really, really fun. Yeah, it's, and a lot of the emails I get um, or consultation requests I get, um, people just allude to the fact that they've been listening to my podcast. They love it, and I've had a lot of people that um, uh, that email me, they ask for questions and whatnot, and like they tell me like, yeah, like I've been I've been like dealing with like, a lot of binging, and you know, once I started listening to the podcast and stuff, it really helped me adopt a more balanced mindset. So now I never really have that issue. I'm able to kind of really like enjoy my life while keeping my nutrition at point, and that's terrific. Um, and I think yeah. that one of the really cool things with this podcast is just that, just I mean, listening to it every single week, that's gonna help you stay motivated. It's gonna help you. It's gonna help kind of train your brain to keep you on track, keep you on point, and uh, and just keep you focused and determined to your goals. And this is an hour a week or, or two hours a week. So you, I think we're doing we some a lot of weeks we do two. Um, it's not an hour that you necessarily have to completely devote to listening to this. You can be doing stuff. You can be driving. You can be walking your dogs, just walking for the cardiovascular calorie burning benefits of it. You can be at the gym. Um, you can be doing menial tasks. Like so, I mean, it's very productive, and uh, that's why I really like I really like the uh, the podcast theme. You don't have to read. You don't have to watch. You can just listen while doing stuff. Yeah, and it, yeah, and it, this the podcast is going to remain the you know the backbone basically of of uh, what Greg and I do together moving forward with Road to Ripped, and we're going to uh, each obviously keep our own respective blogs and, and all the little projects we've got going on there. But we're also looking at uh, potential YouTube stuff with you know Greg's already got a you know very robust YouTube presence for use of a, an overuse. That's so word. kind of you to say. But I like to but, think of my <laughs> channel as is quite robust. <laughs> it's the, definitely yeah, actually, the, uh, the 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 addiction that I was looking for. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> nice. Got that little addiction drop there. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we, we're gonna. So so once we get the opportunity to like be chilling together, because many of you actually don't know this, Greg and I have actually never hung out in person. We've only this the uh, nature of bloggers. Usually, we just meet online and then just like do you, stuff. You online guys would assume with this incredible rapport, this incredible chemistry, that this is the only yeah. sort of. Uh, spark that could be magnified in uh, in the comfort of personal connection, but no, this has been all digital. This is purely manifest, manifested, manifested. Excuse me, <laughs> manifested. Thank you very much. Uh, via via online video chat. So um, yeah, the world is a cool place. Who knows yeah. what's going to happen in person? Yeah, the world better watch out when we. Meet in person because we're gonna <laughs> start. I mean, okay, so a I'm just ideas. scared because, dude, you're like six four. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wear. I'm gonna have to wear some elevator shoes, man. I'm just like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just like, I'll, I, I, I slunch or, or I slouch a little bit. Slunch? Yeah, I just made that up. No, I'm just. Uh, I, don't, I completely don't care. Rice, so. rice reserve, rice reserve for yeah. slunch. So I, I sl slouch and hunch because I sit over this computer all day. Um, yeah, but yeah, so. Anyways, whatever. But uh, yeah, no, we're, we're looking at three. Three, three, three oh, of my you. friends are all like six four, six five. Like it's, oh nice. Yeah, I'm used to it. Don't worry. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're gonna look out for some fun videos. Once we once we get together and we're doing some like lots of workout videos, we're gonna do really some and really really creative videos, satire videos. I my thing is I like to kind of merge movies with like sort of a fitness component, fitness theme. So I'll take something that I like from a movie, for example, American Psycho, Limitless, Fight Club, Gladiator, and I'll kind of spin that into sort of like a fitness video. I think that's cool because it combines my two passions. Movies with fitness, and it merges them together, yeah. and into a to a difecta of awesomeness. A difecta, yeah. Difecta. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's what that's what we're trying to do. Like Greg and I are having like a load of fun with this, and it's always great when you can do something like as a job that's just really fun and it's making a positive impact in people's lives. So we have a ton of fun, and we're gonna like be doing like all sorts of random satire, <laughs> like funny creative projects, like like uh, the Ripped Report. So the Ripped Report is one of our ideas, and that's it's basically like the Colbert Report, rapport, but uh, with with us as news anchors and making fun of slash making up creative satirical stories on all the nonsense that's going on in the fitness industry. So that'll be a fun little project. Honestly, honestly, Chris, we should probably reward our listeners that are still here listening because we've definitely surpassed yeah. the hour mark. I think we should like give them some free stuff or something. <laughs> email Christopher sure. at uh, email uh, email Greg and uh, and he promises to give you free stuff. I'll give you some yeah. free stuff. Gregory O'Gallagher at gmail dot com. I don't know what it's gonna be. You might not want it, but it will be free. <laughs> I don't really have much free stuff to give. I I need to create some more free stuff to give out. You don't have any free stuff to give, man. You got? No, I don't. I, I've got. Uh, I'm just looking around here. I have like some Pepto Bismol. Um, email email me. Ma make this subject second banana, second banana subject, and ask me any question you want, and I will answer it as long as the subject is second banana, because it's proof that you've listened to it to this com this podcast thus far. You can ask me anything. It'd be personal. Um, so you know, doesn't yeah, matter. So you can say, yeah, hey, I guess if you have a girlfriend, I could be like, uh, I have three. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't have any. Um, not tied down. Yeah. You can say, uh, Gregory, what do you think of Bulletproof Coffee? Like, I love it. What do you think gets me going every morning? While you're sleeping. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. All right. Let's, let's wrap this up. At let's wrap of, this up. So, second banana. Day. Second banana. Second banana to Gregory O'Gallagher at gmail.com. And, um, and you do that to Chris too. Do it to Chris too, because he'll have some. He could answer a couple questions, I think. Yeah, yeah. If you have questions for me, send me second banana as well at uh, Christopher <laughs> at nogym.net. Actually, email um, me first banana. Christopher will be second banana. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, Just CC both of us on the thing. CC both of us. <laughs> Anyways, um, also for those of you who are still listening, you're probably kind of fun. So um, if you have a good joke that you want us to say at the beginning of the next episode. We will accept all good jokes, bad jokes, uh, kind of funny jokes, lame jokes. Just send them our way. If it's good or lame enough, we will read it on the air, and we will say your name if you want us to say your name. That's perfectly cool. So uh, give you a nice little shout-out. Terrific. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening this long. We really appreciate it. We hope yeah. it somehow or another made your day a little bit more special um, and you guys got something valuable out of it and I think that this is going to be really cool listening to these podcast episodes um, just watching Christopher and I kind of merge I mean I mean, not merge, grow like no. develop um, yeah wrong word <laughs> wrong word <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally had my dinner and I like it was one of those days one out of like one day in, in a certain amount of weeks where I just like for whatever reason, I'm not full. So I just had a ton of lasagna. And it's just like yeah. this stuff hit me. And it's like I feel so sleepy and relaxed. I'm just off my I'm off my game. But you know what? <laughs> One of those days, once in a while, I'm only human. It's nothing yeah, your, wrong your, with that. your addiction is not, you know, perfect today. It's not sharp, but you know. it's 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 uh it's okay. It's uh <laughs> it was that one Carbon. little slip up. <laughs> lasagna induced addiction. No, yeah, I know. Lasagna-induced just... <laughs> delusional addiction. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. All right, we're going to wrap this up right now, all right? Peace, everybody. Okay, take care. Bye. Second banana. <laughs>